Hi everyone, Janie here. Welcome back to my garden. It is an absolute gorgeous 80 degree day today. It's absolutely beautiful and I wanted to get out into the garden and do something. Unfortunately, I don't have a ton of time today. It was my daughter Shay's eighth birthday yesterday and today is actually a Friday and so we are having her birthday party and she wanted to have a slumber party with some of her eight-year-old little girlfriends here so in a couple hours I'm gonna have a bunch of girls running around <laughs> so I'm gonna be a little busy then but I have a couple hours between now and then that I can get some gardening done so what I thought I could work on today a quick job a job that I could get done in just a couple hours was planning planting up my kitchen garden. This is my kitchen vegetable garden. I do have to preface this whole video by saying I am not the best veggie gardener. I, I am working on it, I am trying. I feel like that that is kind of how I got started with flowers though, is I started off and I was terrible. I felt like I killed everything right away, but I truly think the difference between a good gardener and a not so good gardener is the good gardener tries again, it tries over and over again. Even if you kill something, you just keep trying and eventually you'll get it. So I feel like I've gotten flowers, I don't feel like I've gotten veggies yet, but maybe maybe this year's the year. We'll have to wait and see. So this is my kitchen garden. It is surrounded with a wattle fence. I do have a bunch of videos on my wattle fence. I did make this myself, um, and I do have my beautiful fountain. You can see the, the birthday balloon. <laughs> it's all decorated. It's, it's a mess inside. <laughs> There's like balloons everywhere and streamers everywhere, but you know, I had to get out here and I had to enjoy the weather. So I don't have a ton of vegetables that I'm going to be putting in this kitchen garden simply because I don't have a ton of room. I feel like that was one of the problems I did last year is I stuffed it with too many things and they got too crowded and then they didn't do well. So this year I'm stepping way back and I'm only putting vegetables in here that I know that I like eating for one thing and then two that I know are small enough and will be able to fit in here. So let me show you guys what I have going on here. I have just been lining up all the plants that I still have to get into the ground. I only have a couple more like planting jobs, like big planting projects that I have to do before my garden tour on May 7th. I have to do my kitchen garden right here. I have to plant these three white pots right there. And then I am adding to my shade garden bed right there. But after I do that, I'm pretty much done for the big planting jobs that I have this year. I mean, I have like a couple little things here and there, but those three spots are the big, the big things. So I have a bunch of plants lined up here. I still do have more plants inside my greenhouse, but my greenhouse has definitely been cleared out. I just have a couple more that I have to get to. I have those back there that I'm really excited about. Um, but over here are the veggies that I'm going to be planting. So let me see, you know what? I'm gonna bring, I'm gonna bring my umbrella umbrella over so we have a little bit of shade. Hold on. Okay, umbrellas up. We have a little bit of shade. I do have some notes that I made just so that I don't say the wrong things for you guys. Um, so first off, right here, I always plant, every year I've planted a purple hyacinth bean to grow up this pergola right here. And I do have them already planted, but these look terrible. <laughs> I left them out a couple days when it got a little bit of frost, like the slightest bit of frost. Um, so one of these actually completely died. Uh, and then the other two, these two are doing well. So I think I'm going to do this one right there and that one over there. And then I still want to do the sign in my front yard. Um, I Last year, I grew the purple hyacinth bean up in that sign. I'll see if I can find a picture right now. I think I'm just going to direct sow that one because you definitely can direct sow a purple hyacinth <laughs> purple hyacinth bean. Um, they're also called a Tonga bean or a Lab Lab bean. So if you guys recognize it by that name better, you know, that that's also the name. I've just always called it a purple hyacinth bean. They do get about 10 to 15 feet tall. So when I put it on here and it grows up here, it always grows up to the top of my pergola and it just looks absolutely gorgeous. So it's not a vegetable but I do put it in my veggie garden, so that's why I'm showing you guys that right now. Okay, next 
actual veggie that I'm really excited about planting. That's all twisted. This is a zucchini. And last year I grew a zucchini and I ended up taking it out because it was taking up just almost the entire area right here. And I zucchini is actually one of my favorite vegetables to eat. So I really do want to grow zucchini, but they're so big. They're absolutely, they just take over and I just don't have enough room. So my mom grew this one last year. It's called a bush baby zucchini squash bush baby let me show you a picture of the zucchini now the zucchini don't get as big as regular zucchini they only get about four to six inches uh, long but they are ready to harvest in only 35 days and this plant will only get up to two feet wide and you compare that to a regular zucchini plant that gets up to four feet wide if not even longer or bigger and yeah I I'm really excited about this one because I think that this might be a way that I can grow zucchini in my small veggie garden and still really enjoy it and not have it just absolutely take over everything. Then I do have two varieties of tomatoes. The first one is sun gold cherry tomatoes, which I'm sure you guys have heard of these. They're very, very popular, but I feel like they're very popular for a reason. My friend Blair, who is my, uh, my veggie gardener guru friend, I asked her what are her favorite vegetables to grow in, because she lives in my same town. I asked what, is, what are her favorite to grow and she said sun gold was definitely one of her favorite. So it is 57 days to maturity and I did want to um, clarify I guess or explain because I was confused about this for a really long time. 57 days to maturity means as soon as I take this and I put it in the ground that's when the clock starts. Now if I was going to direct sow if I had like a packet of seeds and I put them in the ground today it would still be 57 days from today. So it's basically, once you get it into its final resting spot where it's gonna to grow to maturity, that's when the clock starts and that's when it's 57 days. So I was always kind of confused with that. Hopefully that helps you. It's, it's the same for cut flowers as well. If you're growing cut flowers from seed, it's whether you transplant it or whether you direct seed it, um, it's, the same, it's the same time because you know the seed will obviously grow quicker if it's in its final spot and it's nice and warm and all that that kind of stuff. Anyway, then I do have the Proven Winners Bellini tomato. I grew up from seed. It's been, this poor thing has been sitting there. It does have aphids, which I just noticed. Um, so hopefully it does okay. This tomato plant is hands down my family's favorite. And I don't say that because it's Proven Winners. It actually is our favorite. Like last year I grew this and we would like rush to find the ripe tomatoes and then snatch them so nobody else got them. <laughs> so I feel like I should grow a couple more plants than just one. One. Um, maybe I'll put in two because I do have two two of the transplants growing up. Um, but we just loved it so much. My favorite, it, so it's a cocktail tomato. So it's probably like that big and it's orange as well. And yes, I know I'm growing sun gold, which is orange. Cherry tomatoes are about one inch in diameter. And then I am growing the Bellini, which are co orange cocktail tomatoes. But I think I just prefer orange tomatoes. I don't know. I just really like the orange ones. I think that they're really sweet, really yummy. My favorite thing that I made last year was bagels and cream cheese. And then you slice the blini tomato on it and then you put fresh basil on it. Oh, it was, it was so good. I cannot wait. I cannot wait to have that meal. Um, it was just, it was so good. So then I have basil, of course. I kind of wish I had the amazel basil from Proven Winners. I really, really liked the amazel basil. I actually liked it even more than the pesto besto, which is what I grew last year. The amazel basil I grew the year before, and I felt like that was a lot better. Um, but I just have this regular sweet basil, which I think will be absolutely delicious and then of course Italian parsley which I found myself using this herb the most out of all the herbs that I had growing last year then I do have golden lemon thyme um, just because I thought it looked fun to grow <laughs> and I was looking up different recipes that I could make with this and I'm pretty excited about it there's a couple chicken recipes that I think will be delicious so yeah so I am just going to get all these plants in it should take me no time at all but that's perfect that's what I need for right now before all the little girls show up here <laughs>
okay and I'm all done. That took no time at all. I love gardening projects like that. So I have, you can barely see it. I have my purple hyacinth bean right there. And then I have another one over there. I did my basil. I didn't separate my basil. Robbie from Visit Our Garden, he was telling me how you can completely separate the basil. I think I should do that, but I just, I just didn't get around to it today. Uh, then I have the bush baby zucchini. So that should grow about right there. I think that that will be perfect. I feel like I need to add more stuff into here, but I don't want to make the mistake that I did last year <laughs> where everything's really small and I think, oh yeah, I can fit this in and I can fit this in. So I am just under exaggerating or under, I'm, I'm, I'm shooting low this year so that I have plenty of room and I can really focus on these vegetables so that I can do a really good job with them, which is my goal for this year. So the bush baby zucchini, the lemon thyme, the lemon golden thyme, the um, sun gold cherry tomatoes, and then finally the Bellini cocktail tomato. I didn't end up planting the other one because I just thought I don't I don't have enough room. I don't want to shove it in. And then I do have the parsley right over there. So yeah, so this is going to be my kitchen garden for this year. So I'm going to start with these. I feel really confident with all of these vegetables and I'm excited to see how they do this year. While I'm back here, I did want to give you all an update on my stock tanks over here. Um, and my, my lights came unplugged. So just ignore that. But that last year, this was one of the projects I did. I added these stock tanks here and I filled them up and I planted them up as pollinator friendly gardens, which worked uh, just, just okay. You know what I mean? Like we're not all perfect gardeners. Everything is an experiment. I think the problem that I had with my stock tanks, my pollinator friendly garden is I chose a ton of perennials and perennials do take a couple years to kind of totally mature, totally bloom out. And so I was expecting a lot from these and this is kind of like prime area in my garden. And I ended up putting a bunch of perennials in here that barely even bloomed at all. And so I thought, oh, well that's kind of a waste as a pollinator garden. So I'm not totally sure what I'm gonna do it. Now that the perennials have been in for at least a year, they're so much bigger and I know that they're gonna do so much better this year. But since last year was the first year that I planted these stock tanks, the soil level dropped so much. So I'm gonna have to take them out anyway. So I haven't totally decided what I'm gonna do. I'm definitely not gonna address this before the garden tour on May 7th, but it is something that I'm kind of like have in the back of my mind that I do. I know I need to address it. The one thing I did want to show you guys is my, I'm pretty sure this is showy, my showy milkweed right here. So last year, Rich from the old Swede farm and I combined forces and we started a project called hashtag milkweed, milkweed for monarchs 2022 with the goal of raising awareness of planting the importance of planting native milkweed in your area. So I did a whole video on it. It was one of those like informational videos. I I'm very proud of it. So check it out if you guys have time, because I think it's a really good video to watch. I will link it up above right here and then also link it in the description down below. But basically the gist of that video was talking about how important it is to plant native milkweed for monarch butterflies. So monarch butterflies like, you know, are at risk of going extinct. And part of the reason why is because their habitat is getting taken over by farms and by, you know, urban development and urban sprawl and all that kind of stuff. And these milkweeds usually grow like in ditches or like on the side of the road. And now they're getting sprayed for weeds now at this point, um, like as weeds. And so uh, monarch butterflies lay their eggs on this milkweed. And then the only thing that those larvae eat are milkweed and native milkweed to be specific. And so by native milkweed, I mean only in certain areas, <laughs> only in certain areas will certain groups of butterflies lay their eggs on certain varieties of milkweed for their young to eat. So here in California are, at least in my area, the native varieties are showy milkweed and narrow leaf milkweed. Now I have been at some of the big box stores and I've seen them sell milkweed that is not native to our area and they've advertised it as pollinator friendly, right? So maybe it's like bee pollinator friendly or hummingbird pollinator friendly, but it is not monarch 
pollinator friendly. So you might see that. And if you don't know what mate, what native variety is native to your area, you, ha you have to be aware of that because you might think that you're doing good for the monarch population and you're really, you're really not, unfortunately. So it's a really, I, I feel really strongly about getting that word out. I know Rich does as well. We named it hashtag milkweed for monarchs this year. It's 2023, not to be like, trendy and use a hashtag but so that when you guys do plant your native milkweed you can tag it and so then everybody else can look and see see it maybe see if they're in their area see what type of milkweed is native to your area and then hopefully we can all join in and there's a lot of there's a lot of challenges and, and monarch and milkweed challenges going on across the internet which is so fantastic so we're just we're just trying to add to that and spread spread the word basically so let me show you my show Showy milkweed. I'm very, very proud of it. So I am actually having a lot of trouble with milkweed. I actually planted by seed. I planted a whole bunch of them back here and I actually only had two do really well. So here's the showy milkweed. And then right here, you can see my narrow, narrow leaf milkweed coming back. And I actually was not aware that milkweed dies dies back in the winter and then comes back strong. So this is like so much stronger than it was last year. Um, some colleagues from my master gardeners class actually taught me that. And I'm so glad they did because I was, I was about to pull this plant out because I thought it was dead. So just so you all know that it does die back in the winter and then it comes back nice and strong. And then I like having the milkweed in these, these stock tanks right here because then I can be sure that I won't accidentally spray any of these plants if I'm spraying BT because I do spray BT on my super tunias to keep the budworms away and so I will just make sure that I don't get any of that over here um, that you know is going to mess with the larvae or caterpillars of the monarchs so I'm very proud of this I'm definitely going to leave that here this is a mystic spires salvia which has buds all over it which I'm excited about and then these are a whole bunch of perennials, which I'm not totally sure what I'm going to do with at this point, but for now, they're just going to stay in there. All right. So that is it for today. I, again, want to encourage all of you, don't get frustrated if you don't do well at something in the garden. Like I garden all the time and I still mess up all the time. And again, you just got to keep going. You got to keep trying. I really, truly think that's the secret of gardening is that everybody messes up. The good gardeners just keep trying. So when I mess up on my veggies or when I mess up on my milkweed, I'm, you know, I might get frustrated, but it's going to be okay. I'm just going to keep trying. So please consider planting some native milkweed in your garden this year. And if you are on YouTube or if you are on Instagram or Facebook, do a little hashtag milkweed for monarchs 2023. That will be really, really exciting for all of us. And hopefully, you know, we can get a whole bunch of people involved this year. Let me know if you guys have any other suggestions for small size vegetables in my small size veggie garden. I think I have a little bit of extra space, maybe for like one more thing or two more really, really small things. Um, I'm gonna be watching it and see how it does, but I'd love to hear if you guys have a small garden, what you do for small space veggie gardens as well. So anyway, I hope you all enjoyed this and I hope you all have a chance to get in your garden today. Did you get your mouse? Did you get it? Can... Did you get your mouse? Oh, you got it. Oh, you're such a hunter. You're such a hunter. You're such a hunter. Can I have it? Can I have it? Can I have it? No. <laughs>